Hi, I'm Greg Lavadera. Welcome to part two of our video series. Today we're going to be talking about how to build high-performance Nordic style walls in the United States. In part one we talked about why Swedish building was relevant to us in the United States. Now it's time to look at how we can build walls like theirs. Let's get right into it. In our last video, we looked briefly at the typical Swedish wall. It's a multi-layered wall designed to maximize energy performance and to use simple materials so it can be built with the carpentry tradition. The core of the Swedish wall is typically a 200 millimeter stud space. 200 millimeters is just under 8 inches. That's um, a good half to three quarters of an inch larger than our 2 by 8 studs. The insulation in that stud space will typically be between R30 and R32. These large dimension studs make for a strong wall, so spacing the studs far apart to reduce the amount of thermal bridging through the framing is easy to do. On the interior side of that 200 millimeter core, the first thing will be their vapor barrier. This is a sheet that extends from the floor all the way up to the roof. They actually carry it across the ceiling. This creates the airtight envelope of the Swedish house. Inside of the vapor barrier, they put a layer of 50 millimeter furring strips. That's two inches thick. This creates a wiring chase. They run all of their electrical wires and their plumbing supply piping. So there's no need for those wires to pass through the airtight barrier. So they keep that airtight barrier continuous around the entire house across the ceiling. This wiring chase is also insulated two inches, about R9 of stone wool. Then they put their interior finishes over that. On the outside of the stud core, the Swedes have another layer of 50 millimeter furring, again insulated, and over this they attach their wood siding. It's typically thick, solid wood, board and batten siding. So that's the typical Swedish wall. It's typical assembly is about 14 inches thick. The total R value of the insulation in that wall is about R50. And this is the kind of wall they build on every house. It's not just the rich guys that get that house. It's not just the people that are zealous about, you know, green building and sustainability. Everybody gets a wall that good in their house. The bad news is our standards here in the United States are pathetic in comparison to these Swedish walls, embarrassingly pathetic. Our best house builders here in the U.S., people that we give awards to for building good walls, don't build walls as good as the, the Swedes are building every day. The good news is that there is nothing going on in these Swedish walls that American builders don't have in their skill set. If you can build a crummy 2x4 wall with R13 insulation, then congratulations, you qualify. You're ready to build a wall better than the best American builders. Let's look at how. One thing we don't expect is for you to jump in and start building the very best wall that you can build right from the get-go. We've broken this down into easy to handle steps. There's a good, better, and best configuration of these walls, so you can take them on as your comfort level and your business model allows. We call these the USA New Wall, a new way to build walls in the United States. First up, the good wall. It's the first easy step. This is a single layer wall, just like we're used to building. It's in 2x6 or 2x8 configuration. Aside from, from the 2x8s, which are big, it's very much like the walls you're used to building every day. Okay. The differences are that you're going to use stone wall insulation instead of fiberglass. This is because it has higher R values per inch and because it makes quality installations easier. We have an article about why that's so. We'll provide a link for it at the end in the description. And because stone wall insulation doesn't come with a craft vapor retarder laminated to it, you're going to use a separate variable permeability vapor retarder layer. That's going to be just like the Swedish vapor barrier. That's going to cr create your airtight layer over the entire inside surface of your wall, your ceiling, your house. Now, there's some limitations here. You're putting that right behind your drywall, so you want to limit the number of penetrations you make through that vapor layer. 
because every time you make a hole, you're going to have to seal it up tight. You should think about putting your outlets on the floor at your exterior walls instead of in the wall, and try your best to keep your light switches, your switch boxes, all on interior partitions. <clears throat> the better wall steps it up a notch. Okay, you're going to take your good wall that we just described, and on the inside we're going to add 2x2 two two furring to create an interior wiring space, just like the Swedish wall. Inch and a half thick. This uh, goes over the vapor sheet, which means now it'll be much easier to avoid putting holes in it. You can run all the wire inside of that, that vapor sheet. This wiring space will also be insulated. Inch and a half stone wool bat will provide about R6. Right? Now that's just isolated your stud core from the exterior, which provides a thermal break that we've been talking about. The 2x6 version of this wall will give you up to R29 total of insulation value, the 2x8 version up to 36. The best wall completes the picture here. We take the better wall, now to the outside we add a continuous layer of stone wool insulation. It can be up to 3 inches, but let's just say 2 inches thick. This is covered with treated furring and a rain screen uh, wall cladding can go over that. The good thing about the stone wool in its densest variety, it doesn't require the furring, which means you get a complete thermal break from the exterior. That isolates your interior studs from transferring heat to the outside. So, the total for insulation layers in the 2x6 version configured like this tops out around R38, the 2x8 version around R45. There are links in the, to web pages in the description below, which will explain the USA New Wall in more detail. Next, we're going to look at advances in platform framing techniques, so come back because it's just getting good.